In 1972, at the Cannes Film Festival, there was a little film that was entered into it called Jeremiah Johnson. The film stars Robert Redford and Will Gear, and it's directed by Sidney Pollack. Robert Redford plays the title character of Jeremiah Johnson. Will Gear plays a character called Bear Claw. The feature film is based on two books, one of them that is called Crow Killer, The Saga of Liver Eating Johnson, and the other book is called Mountain Man. The real Mountain Man's name was actually John Jeremiah Johnson, and he was a real-life trapper, and he had the inclination for cutting out and eating the livers of the Crow Indians that he had killed. He hated the Crow Indians because they murdered his wife, and he swore vengeance against them and the entire tribe. The books were given to John Malias and Edward Annault, and the screenplay was written. Robert Redford and Sidney Pollock began talks with the studio about making the film. The studio was all for it, but they wanted it entirely shot on a back lot in Hollywood. Sidney Pollock and Robert Redford said they wanted to shoot it on location in Utah, and basically the studio told them that they had $4 million, shoot it wherever you want, but that's all you're getting. So almost all the locations of the film were shot on or near Robert Redford's property in Utah. He owned approximately 600 acres at the time. Now there were a few locations that they shot that were a little distance away from that, but most of them were shot around his property. Robert Redford calls this one of his favorite movies of all time. He kind of likes it because the character of Johnson suffers, but he continues on and struggles through. There were scores of American Indians from northern Utah that were hired as actors and extras. Redford did a lot of his own stunts, and he was a bit of a daredevil in his younger years. He appreciated the stunt people on set, but he preferred to do his own stunts, or at least he did at the time. Some of the scenes were filmed near St. George, Utah, which is where Robert Redford starred earlier in a western that you might remember, called Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Redford loved working with Sidney Pollack. They got along great, on and off the set, and they were close friends. But they had some horrific times filming in cold conditions. Robert Redford is quoted as saying they had seven cases of frostbite, four cases of strep throat, two cases of pneumonia, but only one case of Napoleon Brandy. They even had trouble getting the horses out of the stalls it was so cold on some mornings. The cast and crew was wondering when it was all going to end. The weather couldn't have been rougher for the cast and crew that year, but it also turned out a perfect finished film. The role of Jeremiah Johnson was originally to be played by Lee Marvin, and then it was thought that Clint Eastwood would make a good Jeremiah but this was when they had Sam Peckinpah attached to direct the project. There was a problem though. Peckinpah and Eastwood did not get along, and Peckinpah eventually left the project, and Eastwood decided to make Dirty Harry instead. Warner Brothers then stepped up and wanted Robert Redford, and Robert Redford suggested Sidney Pollack as the director. The budget on this movie was super tight, because they only had $4 million to work with. Actors John Rubenstein and Tim McIntyre took the assignment of coming up with the film's music, since the production team couldn't afford a named composer. Since Robert Redford was used to this weather, he was used a lot behind the scenes by Sidney Pollack. He was constantly riding snowmobiles all over the place and digging people out that got stuck. Principal photography began in January of 1971, and at that time Sidney Pollack had to mortgage his house to make up some budgetary differences, so he was hyper aware of the limited budget. As they struggled with the weather and the budget problems, most of the shots were done without any second takes. The film was then basically put together in the editing room, which took seven and a half months to complete. 
this film basically had no dailies to watch because you would have fallen asleep. All the shots seemed to be of the same thing, a guy riding his horse in the snow. This is a picture made out of rhythms and moods and wonderful performances by the actors. The movie has somewhat of a strange opening. There's an overture that runs for about three minutes, and then about two-thirds of the way through the film, there's another break of about two minutes. Now here's a fun little point of trivia for you. The little blonde girl that Jeremiah Johnson finds hiding in the root cellar is actually the future country music superstar Tanya Tucker. It just so happened that her family lived in the area where the film was being shot, and she kept pestering Robert Redford to put her in the movie, and he did. It took about three months for the casting department to find the female role of Swan, who played Robert Redford's wife, the Native American that he marries. After she auditioned for a different role in a different film, actress Dale Bolton was spotted by one of the casting directors. Now here's the odd thing about this. This is the only film that she ever made. I don't think I've ever heard of an actress or an actor that only makes one feature film. The movie's technical director was actually a flathead Indian, and he spent a lot of time coaching Dale Bolton. The role of Jeremiah Johnson is actually based on a guy named Liver Eating Johnson. Liver Eating Johnson's wife, who was also pregnant at the time, was actually killed by a random raiding party of Blackfeet. In the movie, they show that her death is in revenge for them violating the burial grounds that are sacred to these Indians. In truth, she was killed in the spring while Johnson was off trapping, and he didn't return to find her body until several months later. He finally identified the band of Indians that had killed her because he recognized the Tennessee rifle that he had given his wife in the possession of one of the Blackfeet warriors. He was on a mission to get revenge for the death of his wife, and he recruited other Indians, including other flatheads, to help him achieve this vendetta. The part in the movie where they send people out from the tribe to try to bring back his scalp is really true. This happened numerous times. Robert Redford was instrumental in the pacing of the film. He became another kind of actor. He became far more internal. There's some of the movie that has no dialogue in it at all, with an over two minute scene following his wife's death where there's just visuals, no dialogue, and very little background noise. You feel the isolation and the sheer depression that is setting in on Jeremiah Johnson. Will Gear, who plays Bear Claw, meets Robert Redford at the beginning of the film and kind of teaches him the ways of the wild and how to survive in the wilderness. Johnson and Bearclaw meet at the end of the movie for a final time, and it's kind of a special meeting between student and teacher. Bearclaw realizes how tough the wilderness has been on Jeremiah. When Jeremiah asks him if he knows what month it is, Bearclaw replies, No, I really don't, Pilgrim. That's how he always referred to Jeremiah in the film. Then, the very end of the film shows a wordless encounter between Jeremiah Johnson and paints his shirt red, the Indian that's behind all the attacks. They're sitting upon their horses, they're far apart, and Johnson actually reaches for his rifle. But then, paints his shirt red, raises his arms in a gesture of peace that Johnson slowly returns to him. What a classic movie this is. Not only is it excellent filmmaking, but it's superbly acted. If you haven't seen the film in a while, I would encourage you to watch it again, because there aren't many films that are this good. If you enjoyed this video, check out the description for links that help support the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching.